After growing some cabbages in my garden last year, I wanted to try my hand at preserving them through this ancient method of preservation called fermentation. I've never fermented anything before, and honestly I was a little bit nervous about it because it's basically a form of controlled decay, and I know that it's a delicate balance of bacteria and things can go wrong. And to be honest, things did go wrong when I did this the first time. But the nice thing is, is it's just cabbage and you can try it again. I use this really nice fermentation crock uh, to get started. It is believed that fermented cabbage was first eaten by laborers as they were building the Great Wall of China, brought to Europe a thousand years later. In the 16th century, Germans began dry curing cabbage with salt to extract water from the vegetable, turning the sugars into lactic acid, which served as a way of preservation. This fermented cabbage is known as sour cabbage or sauerkraut. Fermentation is an anaerobic process which occurs in the absence of oxygen. In this environment, the desirable bacteria thrive as they break down sugars, starches, and carbohydrates while releasing alcohols, carbon dioxide, and organic acids that preserve food. In lactic acid fermentation, yeast and bacteria convert sugars into lactic acid, which preserves the foods. Our modern understanding of fermentation comes from the work of chemist Louis Pasteur, who is able to demonstrate through his experiments that fermented beverages result from the action of living yeast transforming glucose, which are sugars, into ethanol, which is an alcohol, in an anaerobic environment. While my sauerkraut fermented, I invited Chef Maggie Lawson over to show me some creative ways to serve fermented foods. Hi, I am Chef Maggie Lawson. Um, I own a company here in Cincinnati, Ohio. I do meal prep for busy, health-conscious families and individuals, um, folks that are going through like ginormous life transitions, like bringing a baby into the world, dealing with some chronic health issues, um, maybe a major surgery that comes out of nowhere, and they, or they're just really busy and they need extra support. So we prep an entire week's worth of meals and drop them right at their doorstep and all they do is heat them up. So today I'm gonna help Erin explain to you how to make kraut and then show you a recipe that um, I'm gonna use some of the kraut that I've already made in. This delicious organic cabbage here. Very basic, but it will make the most delicious, sour, fermented, crunchy goodness. Um, I'm gonna measure it, so I'm not the most precise cook. I will be 100% honest with you, that's not how I cook. I cook more from the gut. But with kraut, it's important to measure because you wanna get the salt to a vegetable ratio right. So um, there's a core inside of this cabbage that you're not gonna use because it's way too hard. So I'm just going to cut it in half like this. Look how pretty she is. Uh, and then I'm going to take this part out right here. So I'm just going to create a, cut a triangle like this. And uh, I would recommend using a sharp chef's knife. See, I was able to do it with two cuts. So yeah, the core is out now. You can see that the core is out. And then I have a scale, kitchen scale that I bought. It's like $20, I think. They're really affordable. They're great for baking too. Um, so I'm just gonna lay that down, make sure that it's zeroed. So that means it's like ready to go. I could also, if I needed to, I could also put this on here and zero it again, which means that it's not weighing the bowl, it's just weighing the vegetables inside. And then um, I'm gonna make about two pounds worth of kraut. So all of this is usable. You could save this. Um, this is actually great to pack down your crock, especially if you're using a jar and not a fermentation crock. We have two different fermentation crocks here. This one has a water seal on top and it opens up like that. And then this one um, is just packed in with these gorgeous weights. Those are, those are also have weights inside. This is an Ohio pottery crock, which is made in Zanesville. So it's kind of special because it's from not too far away. And they've been making these for a really long time. So with the cores out, we have two pounds of cabbage weighed out here. Um, so if every two pounds of cabbage, you only want one tablespoon of salt. You can also add uh, kohlrabi, turnips, beets. Beets are gorgeous. They make like a really nice bright red kraut. Um, radishes, all sorts of stuff too. And peppers, lots of like herbs as well. 
I'm just gonna make it straight up cabbage and salt, start simple. Um, another thing to take into consideration, and I will show you like this, so you can see it, is you wanna get a really fine cut on this because it's easier to get the water out. Um, and the water becomes the brine, which is basically what you cover the crop with. Yeah, and then you have like these nice fine pieces and sometimes if you get bigger pieces like that, you can just cut them down a little bit more so that everything's kind of consistent in terms of uh, its size and texture shape. And then just for some, we're gonna throw this in the bowl. Obviously you're gonna do this with all your cabbage, so we would cut all the cabbage like that and then we're gonna put less than a tablespoon, but I'll put a little bit here. And um, some people pound cabbage with like a wooden mallet, but I like my hands, which are clean. Again, we've like sterilized everything with hot water, um, washed our hands thoroughly. Just wanna make sure that sure everything is really clean or you ridden the risk of inviting bad bacteria into your crop and you want the good bacteria in there. So just gonna massage it with our hands and you'll notice like as you massage it more and more liquid comes out um, again I'm just starting with a tiny amount to demo how to do this but you could do like four or five times as much as this and eventually you'll get some liquid that comes out already and then you let it sit for about an hour um, and you'll see that there's more even more liquid and the goal is to use really fresh kraut and to cover your cabbage with the brine. Um, if you don't have enough uh, water that kind of comes out of the cabbage naturally, um, this cabbage is nice and juicy already, and I've only been like massaging it for a minute, then you can mix a brine mixture and cover it completely. And that's what's gonna help it ferment, is being covered in the salt water mix. Uh, one of my favorite ways to eat it is actually a green bowl, which I'm gonna show you now. Very popular right now, kind of in the tradition of like, poke bowls from Hawaii and other uh, kinds of food traditions that just put little bits of things and then you mix them up. It's delicious, kind of like the modern day salad. You can incorporate lots of different ingredients in there. So this one I'm making, I'm gonna add a ferment that I did, which is cabbage and oregano and carrots, um, which is known as curtido. It's a condiment from El Salvador and um, it's traditionally served with pupusas, which are like Salvadorian corn cakes that are stuffed with different things. Um, they make it a lot of times with vinegar, but this one is lacto-fermented, which means I use the exact same process as the kraut. I massage my cabbage and the carrots and added some oregano and just let it ferment for a couple weeks. So you always start your grain bowl with a grain, obviously. Um, this is the grain that I chose. It's actually a mixture of brown rice and quinoa. Super hearty, really great and nutty. I'm just gonna break down how to make it. This looks like a ginormous bowl, but I think every good salad is eaten in a really big bowl so you can toss it yourself. Otherwise, get a little bowl. How are you gonna toss salad dressing in a little bowl? Can't do that, it doesn't work so well. So I'm gonna add about a half a cup of grain to this. And basically I'm showing you how to compose a, a grain bowl. I'm not gonna give you like a straight up recipe because I believe that you can take inspiration from everywhere and including your fridge, which is exactly what I did. I looked at my fridge and I was like, what do I got already? What kind of flavor profiles I wanna play with? I think about two different things. I think about the taste combinations and the texture combinations. So in terms of taste, uh, I like to think about sweetness, saltiness, bitterness, sourness, and umami. And um, kraut has a great sour profile, right? And sometimes a little bit of umami even. I would say this one's more sour. Uh, I also think about texture. So, you know, lumpy, soft, crunchy. So I kind of have like a wide range of things. Um, and then you can look at the recipe that we'll link with this video, but there are different categories that you're looking at. So the grain is always the base. So we got a grain in there and then a serving of protein. So I wanted to make a bowl that was kind of like inspired by a Niçoise salad, which is a French salad that often has potatoes in it. I've replaced potatoes with, with the quinoa brown rice mixture. It almost always has hard boiled eggs in it. So I hard boiled an egg. Um, these are pasteurized, multi-chops. That's why the yolks are so deep golden and beautiful. 
So I'm just gonna cut those into fourths like this. Um, I'm also thinking about how to arrange the bowl so it's like really gorgeous when I present it and appetizing with all these like nourishing, beautiful foods in there. This is a red romaine. Look how gorgeous they are. We already, we already washed it, so I'm just gonna slice it. Um, so we're just gonna have a little bit of this lettuce in there. So you can see I'm kind of like creating different little sections in the green bowl. And then um, another part, like I said, of the niswa salad is usually some green beans. So we're gonna put green beans there. We always get a little bit of tuna. So I have um, just some like wild caught canned tuna. These are all things that I had in my kitchen, just kind of hanging out in the fridge. And I was like, you know, what, what do I want these to look like? Um, sometimes I like to toss the green beans and another flavor profile. So I got a little bit extra flavor. So I brought um, a lemon and I'm just gonna zest the lemon a little bit. Toss this with some lemon. I'm just gonna add some butter. I think we're gonna keep the butter out of there for right now. And a little bit of salt. Just a little bit of salt in there. So this way the like some of the ingredients might already have their own flavors going on before. So we got that and then the crust. This is my crudito. Uh, usually in any swell salad you have olives, but we're gonna sub in the kraut for this one. Just gonna put this right here. So that. I usually try to have one cooked vegetable and one raw vegetable. So my raw vegetable right now is gonna be the kraut. And um, obviously the lettuce is, is raw as well. And then the cooked vegetable or the green beans. And then you always want some sort of like really nice garnish. So the garnish I usually like try to put over the entire space. And so I just have some curly parsley that I mix really well. And I'm gonna throw that over the top of the entire bowl. And that's gonna also give an extra flavor profile. A little um of a uh, kind of bitter. So bitter is different than sour, right? We have the sour with the kraut and then the bitter with the parsley. And then I have some red pepper chili flakes here. I love um, spice. Some people don't love it, but I also love red. <laughs> so it offers another color contrast on top of there. And then the final thing is I made like a traditional French vinaigrette. Um, this has some apple cider vinegar uh, cold pressed olive oil, and then I use whole grain mustard. And super simple and salt. A little bit of salt in there too. And I um, just emulsify this, basically whisked it before, so that it's uniform and well combined. And I'm just gonna put about two tablespoons over the top of this entire thing. And yeah, and then you just toss that all up and eat it. But you start out with this beautiful presentation. You can even add a little bit more green over the top if you want. And that's my refrigerator Niswa's inspired green bowl. And I added a little bit of um, the homemade kraut to it. Uh, kraut is obviously delicious. I love sour flavors. It's also really healthy. So kraut, um, you're digesting, the, you're ingesting the bacteria that helps support a healthy digestive system. So eat some kraut, make some at home. Thanks for joining us. This beautiful meal was as delicious as it looks. And as Maggie said, fermented foods are rich in probiotic bacteria. So consuming them adds these beneficial bacteria and enzymes to your gut, increasing the health of your microbiome and digestive system. For more delicious food science, check out sensimuseum.org.